Welcome to Apocalypse, Mr. Mankind. Who are you? Your new lord and master. You may call me Darkseid. Welcome to Darkseid's couch and joining with us, forming our own nexus, I'm Shay. This is James. This is Mike. Our you own nexus? That's kind of a bit. We had a whole debacle. I just pulled that out of thin air as I said it. We and didn't it was prepare. It was, yeah, we didn't prepare. Not a big fan of preparing post episode 250. Mm -hmm. Not liking it. Because like, I don't down. think there's a big enough difference between preparing and then not preparing. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of diminishing returns. Well, I prepare a lot of stuff that just ends up not happening. Yeah, like I have, I have notes and things. I'm just like, well, I guess we're just not going to do that. Which is fine, whatever. I don't care. We're, uh, don't today we're looking at uh, Nexus Number One by Capital Comics, uh, an exciting new super action magazine. Which sounds like that's translated from something. Like they uh, translated it into mm, English. I think calling comics like an action magazine or magazine back in the day tr tried to give it a little air of like uh sophistication over a dc or a marvel book well still like this is a lot of descriptions of what this magazine is it's exciting it's exciting it's it new. is exciting yeah it's new. it's super yeah and it's action yeah all of those adjectives were necessary you couldn't lose any of them you could have lost all of that and it was this is also the magazine. first issue of capital comics not just the capital markers <laughs> Capital. Yeah, that's all I can think to. I know, me too. Capital uh, knockers. Or maybe yeah. the Capital Riots. Shay, Shay really thought we had looked at Capital Comics before, which seems unlikely since they only ever published 15 comic book issues, most of which were Nexus comics. Uh, beyond that, they, they did the first four issues of The Badger and a couple issues of Whisper, which is still on the wheel before they folded up shop and, and went home. And we read The Badger. Yeah, but not one of those issues. Mm. They went over to First Comics. Mm. Uh, actually, Nexus and Badger, we'll find out. Both uh, created by Mike Barron, we're going to find out. Are actually related. I don't know if anybody, did anybody catch the connection there? That, that... Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, yeah, this was um, Nexus, the first miniseries. It was a three-issue miniseries from Capital Comics uh, in black and mm -hmm. white. And re requested, yeah, sort of requested. My buddy Josh uh, requested this, but I don't know that he actually requested I think he just told me I should read it because mm. I would enjoy it. And then I said, well, everything has to be fodder. Everything has to be fuel. Mm -hmm. And so it gets shoveled onto the wheel, and now here it is, and we're going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, he was right, though. Uh, it was good and to the point where I was reading this. I go, how the hell am I going to make this funny? Yeah, I yeah. felt the same way. There's nothing funny in this because it's just a good comic book. Oh, it's like, oh, this is just really good. Ah, oh, shit. We almost ah. struck on the show. Now I got to be talented. Yeah, now I got to do something real. No, no, there's a, there's a few things. There's a few rabbit holes I went down. Uh, the year was 1981. Uh, I think it was January 1st, 1981 when this was released, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, so this was less than three weeks before a little fella named Rappin' Ronnie Reagan took office, okay? Mm, I I, before America became great. The first time. <laughs> well, it had been... It had been time. great. No, no, no. That was the second time. It had been great, and then Reagan made it great again, and then it stopped being great, and then it was great again in 2016. Was that his uh, campaign his was slogan as well, Make America his, Great Again? Did his he slogan the same was, thing as Trump? His slogan was, Let's Make America Great Again. It's the same slogan. No, Trump vehemently denied that and said, no, this is a completely different slogan. Yeah, all right. He went the vanilla ice route. I liked it, a little bitty tang. You think? Uh, that. You think... Yeah, you think yeah. Donald Trump, um, he saw that yes. interview where Vanilla Ice is like claiming that he didn't steal mm -hmm, that song mm -hmm, from, mm -hmm. from, from uh, un, you know, Under Pressure? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Trump says, was watching it. He goes, I should save that for later. Let me save that. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I do know that Vanilla Ice then, in order to get out of that whole legal issue, he just bought that song. He just bought Under Pressure. Oh, that's genius. Does he still have the rights? Yeah, worked out well for him. He might still have the rights, although, so the, the saga of Vanilla Ice, which I honestly do you think will tie into what I'm about to name. say. So I'm, I'm Rob, Van, yeah. Rob Van Winkle. Well, That's awesome. When, That's when I cut up with, with Rob a few years uh, ago, uh, he was making smart houses. He was designing smart houses and putting in, you know, cameras and all that kind of stuff to, to, for people to have smart houses. That was, his, that was his thing. What a great um, man. 
what a great man. I believe he's become uh, an anti-woke crusader in recent awesome. years. Even, oh, thank you, James. So, thank you for telling me that. I believe that's that's the side he... I just saw that. I haven't followed up on that, but I believe I've heard that. Let and me that just, is, let me that just is, follow him on it? Twitter really quick. <laughs> it's called X. X. It's always been called X. I'm starting to gaslight people into saying uh, into believing it was never called Twitter. It was oh, always that, all right. I'm, I'm with I, you I enjoyed when that. James so tried to back. gaslight me into thinking it was gas lamp. <laughs> Yes, that was another campaign oh, of mine. The la the layers. The most innocuous type of gaslighting is just a, a simple a simple word change. Because you can't get too mad at somebody for doing that, but it is still fucked up. You know, gaslighting is how you get out of charges. You make the cop think they did it. Gaslighting who? The judge? <laughs> no, just be like, just be like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> if you what you George know? George Costanza said, if you believe it, it's not a lie. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you just gotta believe your you gotta believe your shit. That's how you Look do a debate. Like those campaign yeah. debates and like all they do is gaslight each other. I took a debate class in high school and that was basically what they told us. It's just like, you don't have to believe what you're saying. Just believe it really hard. Just say it really hard and you'll probably win. What a terrible lesson to teach a child. Uh, yeah, it was a terribly good lesson to learn it was like, a child. like lie harder? Lie hard. Lie so hard. Well, because you would get assigned a position. I actually had this happen. I had this happen in college, by the way. I had a debate and I was assigned a position. And it wasn't a position I agreed with, by the way, but I did my diligence and I had a good uh, and I you know, won that debate and I had a lot of good points, even though I didn't believe it. And even even though everybody in the class knew that I didn't actually necessarily believe it, that I was assigned this position, they were still angry with me. Like I still had people like tr trying to confront me because of what I said in my, because of the position I took. Hold on now. Hold on now. So, yeah. like, isn't that bad for society to teach mm -hmm. kids to have that skill? I don't think it's bad to have the skill. Like, don't you, like don't 19, you want 20 it? Years old. Don't you want it so, like, humans in general just are incapable of bullshitting? Well, because <sighs> that's what that is. You're taught to bullshit. Well, it's it, I, it, it's a it's a tough thing to walk because yeah, it's arguably bullshit, but it's. Also, that you're just trying to see the other side of something, and that is a good thing to learn. I, I guess, but I don't know, man. I feel I like was it's just, a bad lesson. People were incredulous with me because uh, they didn't like my side, and I, I, I so badly wanted to say while I was standing up at the lectern, you know I didn't pick this, right? You know I was told to take this position. That's how I stupid kids are. I wish I'd had that class. Yeah, you probably would have had a good time. That you would have been failed so it. much you fun. You would have failed it, but you would have, would have had a great time. I would have had so many jokes. Yeah, that would have been a good thing. I don't know. Oh, my God. The, I would, nothing better than a punchline that pisses off a whole room of people. Yeah, it wasn't even a punchline. Uh, stupid. Stupid. I'm, I'm, I, 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 but I'm over it. Mm -hmm. I don't think about it at all. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't think about it ever. I just, um, I'm glad that we like threw you back into that position <laughs> mentally. When you remember stuff like that, your brain releases the same chemicals it experienced while that was happening. I never The only thing I right remember either. about speech class in college was that the teacher was a huge Sister Hazel fan. And I found out yes. that they call themselves Hazelnuts. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. I don't know who Sister Hazel is, but that's bad. It's just one of those like really friendly mid-tempo uh, light rock bands from v they would I, see on VH1. I was, I was honestly about to suggest a song, and then I realized that wasn't them. That was one of the other bands that fall into that category. Right. I believe Sister Hazel is hard to say what it is I see in you. I think that was them, right? I hard have no say. idea. Sounds like I we have, have a cable. Sounds I didn't like have a Wheel song. Uh, Sister Hazel. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's That's play not me a, a little bit of song. it. Let's play me a little bit of it. We can play a little bit of it, but it's not a wheel song. Yeah. All for you. All for you. This is it. Let's From 1997. I'm sure you're going to love this. Yeah, I love music. Don't play too much. I love consonants. Yeah, you might break copyright shape. <laughs> oh, okay. Nailed All right. it. All right, that's enough. All right, we're cutting it. Yeah, yeah. I nailed it. it. I was totally Somebody's right on that. Somebody's favorite band. Yeah. yeah, that person's boring. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was weird. Yeah, that is that, that is what a dull He's person boring, enjoys. Dude. It's like all those Jimmy Buffett people. <laughs> Parrotheads. You're, you're fucking boring, I've been dude. to Jimmy Buffett mm -hmm. twice. I don't know. Shit, you're boring. <laughs> but, I don't know, man. Jimmy Buffett, here's a guy. I mean, he's dead now, so I guess he, he, you know, it's kind of irrelevant now. But here's a guy who said, like, you know what? I want to make a shitload of money, and I just want to kind of kick back doing it. I don't Based. want to work hard for it. And he did. He yeah, found a way him. to just 
take her easy mm-hmm. and make millions. I can't. He would really only him. do tours when he was broke. I saw him two <laughs> like, times. Like he would when make he was money broke. from tour. Yeah, yeah. Whenever, even as an old man, like if he just like he just makes enough money. That's kind of what I do. Just make a shit ton of money doing one thing, and then just kind of chill till you run out of money, and then go back. to Right. Work. But he had like the Margaritaville products and the restaurants. He probably had millions coming in. That was he just his wanted agent. more millions. That was his business manager doing. Oh, that shit. Take it, he was taking a hundred percent. Taking a big his hundo? idea. They're like, oh, bro, man. we're gonna make Margaritaville margaritas. He's like, okay. <laughs> well, he also <laughs> got to ask for any money for that <laughs> shit. Yes, he no, did. Well, go, yeah, come on. He ghost wrote, he ghost wrote a bunch. He had a ghostwriter do it. He hired ghostwriter uh, Johnny Blaze. Oh, I was Gerald thinking of the Blaze. PBS show Ghostwriter. Ghostwriter. Yeah. Cuz that makes ghost more writer. sense. Puns are fun. Which some, when someone says ghostwriter, I in my head I think of the Beatles paperback writer. Oh, I think of Radiohead's paper bag writer. I think of ghostwriter. Look at that, dude. Look! Look at the uh, the nexus of things yeah, that we yeah. just like put together. Uh, wow, hey, nexus. Mike had to bring That's us right. back to the comics. <laughs> so right, I was looking wow, for. Wow, Mike! Looking, I thought I did it pretty you well did. too. I'm just trying hold, to find that. Trying what, to find where that. Where are we when Mike has to rein us in? <laughs> As I was saying it, I thought to my, my brain like, "This will bring me praise, and then you guys should <laughs> not praise me at all." You got praise. It kind know, of that is praise. I thought I was, that I was that expecting. I thought I was, I was. I thought I was. As soon as I said it, I was expecting like, oh, but I got wow. nothing. Yeah, I mean, maybe I just built it up in my head for no. No, one. I just yeah, I said. said. I even took the oh guy. I used to have an oh guy sound effect with the kids yeah. going oh. I think I took it off. Oh really? That was a good one to keep though. It was a good one to keep, but you know, periodically my stream deck blows up on me or so. Anyway, point is Nexus. Here's the thing. Nexus, written and created by our buddy Mike Barron. Uh, with art by Steve Rude. Well, um, so I was uh, kind of curious what Merrick... I uh, enjoyed a lot of Mike Barron's work. Don't know much about him personally. Um, I really enjoyed his work on Dead Man um, and obviously what he did with the Badger. So I decided to look into this a little bit, see what he's been up to lately. Oh, no. So Mike Barron has been working for the Ripiverse, or at least he's got a book coming out for the Ripiverse. And I'm going to guess neither of you guys know about that. Nope. Okay. Kelly Rip- I don't know what Kelly Ripa? Kelly Ripa's line of comic books. No, no, no. Um, the Ripiverse... I can't, it would take the entire episode to get into it. So I'm not really going to get too much into it, but suffice it to say that there is a man who, uh, dis- he was an, he's an anti-woke crusader kind of guy on social media and decided to leverage his following into creating a comic book company called the Ripiverse. The Ripiverse has only published a couple comic books because they tend to be about a hundred pages and they're like 35 bucks a pop expensive comics. Uh, furthermore, they seem to be, from what I've seen, really, really bad. They're really amateurish written. Um, there's some evidence that the artwork is actually not really artwork. It's just 3D models that were taken or anything. Um, not the most acclaimed thing. However, he claims that there are millions and millions of fans. He's had some very uh, successful Kickstarters that may or may not have been inflated because I can't seem to find anyone who's actually read these books, reviewed them. They're, they have like no footprint, yet he's insistent there are millions of people that like this. A lot of people think it might just be sort of like an alt-righty scam kind of thing. Nonetheless, look, I'm not getting anyone's politics on that. I, I don't. I don't fucking know what's going on, but... Nonetheless, recently he's managed to get a couple of bigger names associated with, with the Ripiverse, uh, including Mike Barron signing up to write a book that's coming out soon. And I thought, oh, okay, so is Mike Barron a, a, a right-wing guy? Is he just a boomer who just doesn't know what's going on and just needed a paycheck? What, what's going on here? So uh, I checked out X. We all know X. We all grew up on X. We've loved X for decades. And mm-hmm. I checked out Mike Barron's... Um, profile on X here. And so some of his things, he's got a post about how Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle should co-host the Oscars because fans think it would cancel television. Why do you have to just destroy my... you don't have to hate... Like, it doesn't mean the guy's evil. Did you guys see Ricky... I posted this on X. Ricky Gervais hosting that... uh, Oh, some some award show. I don't know. He's hosted a bunch of award shows. But and now he we don't just like, like him tears he... into everybody in the audience. It was great. Well, people used to like that until the uh, until he said things the audience didn't like, and now now we're supposed to. No, hate the, him, so. it was like a bunch of celebrities and actors and producers it was, and stuff. Yes. He was tearing into him. It was great. But now he he mentioned something about cancel culture, and I didn't even watch it. But now everybody hates him. So I, I don't know. I don't give a shit. I really don't give a shit. But Mike Barron apparently gives a shit. He also does this boomer thing, where uh, he reposts. 
Something boomers like to do is they like to take a picture of somebody they think is badass, usually Sam Elliott. In this case, it's uh, Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone is pretty badass. He is pretty badass, and they just post some text of their boomer beliefs as if it's associated with the guy. I really don't know what the idea is, but boomers do this all the time. Well, hold on now. Like, Mike Barron, like, is... Does he get a lot of work outside of these indie co companies? Does he work for the bigger names? He worked for DC and Marvel in the past. He doesn't anymore. In now the past, be... like what, like 30 years ago? 90s, yeah. All right. So, like, I imagine that he's got, doesn't have a whole, he has all these ideas, but he doesn't have a whole lot going on and no one wants to give him a break. And then mm -hmm. his buddy in the Ripa versa, whatever the fuck. I keep thinking of Kelly Ripa every time. Yeah, I, do too. I imagine, sure. like, she's running the company. Sure, sure. And he just hit him up like, "Hey, we'll we'll publish you. Like you're a bigger name, and we don't have any big names. We'll publish you." And he's just like, he's "All right." But then he's just like, "But no one's buying my books because no one knows this place exists. This is the audience this company's trying to go to. Maybe he just made right. an X profile and is just like well, catering to him. Well, he's maybe he just went the Dave Sims route and just Dave got Sim. crazier. Um, well, Frank Miller, I still sorry, love him. Sim. Yeah, well, and the thing is, well, he's also got a comic book called The Thin Blue Line, so he's a cop uh, guy. Let's do that. Let's put The Thin Blue Line on the wheel. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Thin Blue Line. Um, I will say, though, I was reading some interviews with him, and in the sa there's one interview in, that I read, and in that same interview, he criticizes the media coverage of, like, the George Floyd protests and riots and things like that. But in that same interview, he also talks about, uh, he suggests that he would prefer that police officers learn some uh, holds that are non-fatal. So... I don't know. You know, people are complicated. He's clearly a somewhat conservative guy. Is he a full on Trumpy guy? I don't fucking know. Um, did he feel differently in 1941 when he made this book that doesn't feel very Trumpy at all? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he's 1941? changed. 1941? 19, yep, he's from, he's been writing comic books for almost a hundred years now. No, 1981. I'm doing a lot of things here, all right? Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what's going on with our boy Mike Barron. But you know, the boy can write. The boy can write. Uh, I'm bangers. not outraged by any of this. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not outraged anyway because it's like you can – I can disagree with your politics. Like he's clearly yeah, not a, he's not a I fascist. Thought you were gonna sh yeah, I was about to say I thought you were going to show me that he was like – doing bad stuff it's like no, i don't know no. he was at the capital riot oh that would have been yeah. cool yeah i thought you were going to show me something like that That's no it make I, me like him more but, oh my goodness yeah, no if him, he was yeah him not agreeing with me is whatever i don't sure. care about that and honestly a lot of times it's not that people necessarily even disagree with each other they disagree disagree about the details or the semantics and most of the time if you get people together in the same room like you're going to find out that they mostly agree with each other which is what henry rollins tell, tells us uh -huh. He's yeah. very adamant, especially that, like, when you can just talk about the badger. Yeah, yeah, we talk about There's the There's no right or wrong or left or right when it comes to well, the badger. And I don't, you know, we like to assume that everybody who's conservative is, uh, you know, some sort of fascist or bigot or racist because it's fun. It's fun to make that assumption, uh, but you, not necessarily. That's not necessarily the way it is. And there's some progressive stuff in this Nexus book. I so, love. Yeah. Uh, you guys remember in the badger where he Ginsu knived that knived that demon. Of death. course yeah. I do. Remember that? It's a wonderful yeah. moment. Mike Barron. Dude, there's a Mike Barron Punisher comic book. Yeah. When I found out he wrote that, and I found this. It's on the wheel. My yeah. God. Every time that wheel spins and I say, oh, I hope this comic gets picked. That's not true. I'm thinking of like, man, I hope yeah, that yeah. Mike Barron Punisher. He's got a fucking doom buggy with a skull on it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I want to do that comic. <laughs> wait, wait. So we already did the one where he was on a fucking jet yes, ski. Yes, I found. And now we yes. can do Punisher I, Dune Buggy. I found a Dune Buggy Punisher comic written Who by the Mike Barron. Whose birthday is coming up? Yeah. Mike Barron. Somebody request this. Mike Barron also created Microchip, Punisher's buddy. So yep. there you go. And and maybe then, co and Garth, the and one then, that we saw get murdered. And then Garth Ennis killed him. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Garth Ennis really fucking killed him. Garthine is, is, he's a problematic guy in his own right. But. Oh, dude, he made Crossed. Holy shit. Dude. Oh, yeah? I don't know that one, but... Dude, it's, it's it's the most vile. Like, he should be put in jail for making yeah, it. Yeah, he may be a little problematic, Damn. but I mean... You know, who would have guessed that an industry like the comic book industry that's predicated on weird male power fantasies would breed some weirdos? Like Usually when, like, the real controversial writers, like, they get older, they get a job with DC, and they just start pumping out you know, whatever superhero book they need. And the not not Garthine is he just goes deeper and deeper into that hole that where his ideas come out of. Uh I mean it's a it's a diverse well of people, you know, and we need them all. We need everybody to, to make the world go round. Right? Yeah. Um this is the first appearance of Nexus. Uh 
I th- I had actually kind of in my head I had him confused a little bit with Solar Man of the Atom. From, yeah, um, yeah. And I was thinking that and I was like, oh no no, I don't think I know anything about Nexus. I know a little bit about Solar, and I kind of confused them. But this is Nexus, and uh, he's like a spacefaring dude. He's inspired by Space Ghost. So if you know Space Ghost from back in the oh, day, oh okay yeah. yeah yeah he's a little Space Ghost. The cover the cover just reminds me of Xanadu, like oh. a fucking roller disco. Broadway. Yeah, this bugaloo. This is not depicted in the book, but it is pretty Shay, cool. No. Shay, thank you so much. I was reading this book and I was like, the fuck movies am I going to play Xanadu. about mm. this? And now I get to play Xanadu, a movie I've been wanting to watch for <clears throat> so long. Oh, it's fun. I always wanted to see it. I just ELO had, does the soundtrack. Bro, you're selling me even harder on this movie. Like I've been it's waiting great. to watch it my whole life, and now I have an excuse. Thank you. Oh, what a gift. Welcome. It's my <laughs> birthday. I'll tell you what. Oh. So yeah, on this cover, Nexus, uh he, he wears a like a silver and black spandex suit. He has a what looks like a cyborg visor. Or Cyclops visor, I'm sorry, on his head, and he's holding a uh, beautiful young blonde woman in a pink spandex skin tight leotard thing, and uh, I would have been super into that at the time. You know what? Her look on her face is just like, even though they're surrounded by goons with guns, she her knows. thought is just like, this man will protect me and kill all of you, and I, I'm gonna watch him do it. That is absolutely in keeping with the the feel of this comic book. Nexus mm-hmm. will fuck you up. Yeah, Nexus will fuck you up. Nexus is badass. Nexus like, let me has, tell you that right now. I like this book. He does. It was great. He, Nexus has no chill. Uh, he will fuck your mom and not ask you how you feel about it. Dude, right. He will do anything he, he wants. He is okay with having all these people run at him at once in all the directions. He's got everybody, yep, run at him in all different directions. They've all got little, like, penis helmets. Um, he's not aiming at any of them. <laughs> he's not aiming at any of them. Still no worry at all. He's aiming at the sky. Yeah. Yeah, pretty what cool. What a cool guy. I like this guy. Mm-hmm. I like Nexus. Good dude. Yeah, me too. Based, and, is, base yeah. Nexus. Base Nexus. Baron and Rude actually won a couple of Eisners for their work on this book. So this was the three-issue mm-hmm. black and white miniseries. And they even got, got it over on black and white. They didn't even have to put color in, and they still got me on board. Well, they couldn't afford it, most likely. Like the Ninja Probably Turtles. couldn't afford it. I know mm-hmm. what that's like for sure. Uh, but then after the three-issue miniseries, it ran for like 80 issues in color. So, you know, it, it, it Who definitely Who published it then? Who maybe first comics like the Badger? I'm not sure, honestly. My my first guess would be first comics because that's what took over the Badger. Uh, but I'm probably wrong. Okay. Yeah, good enough. You know, we, yeah. we've all got access to Google. Uh, let's yeah, let's take a look at this thing. We've got a little a little welcome from the uh, from the editor or founder of uh, Ca- uh, Capital Comics, and it's funny because in there he mentions like. Uh, this dude, Richard Brunning and John Davis, these two dudes, actually, they mention like, uh, we've got a lot of stuff coming up, but we're not going to reveal it too much right now because it's best to avoid false promises. So that was a good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Considering none of that stuff happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Like the master of Kung Fu. Come on. I would have liked that. Uh, well, no, that's saying that that's one of their... Uh, that That's, uh, I believe, the dude, Paul Gulassi, who did the cover... He used to work at Ma- uh, Master of Kung Fu at Marvel back in the 70s. Oh, that's a real comic? Dang. That is a, oh, that we, is a we real did comic. That yeah, at the end. No, we ago. never did Master of Kung Fu. I think we did. Shang-Chi, the Master of Kung Fu. I think we did. We never looked at Shang-Chi. I'm pretty sure we did. Maybe we, we did a Marvel team up with Spider Man. He what may I'm have shown of. up. It, yeah. yeah, in one of the early I'm issues. He may have shown up, but yeah. So this is, I don't think there's a, a issue title, by the way, which means I get to come up with a funny one. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this is issue number one. And uh, we open up with a... Uh, it's called Dicks, Dicks, Dicks. Yeah, sure. That's very funny. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> funny. I paid a lot of money yeah. to people to tell me I'm very funny and that I learned it. Yeah, that's not funny. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so this opens up with Nexus in the year 2481. Pretty close. Pretty close. And he's living in the moon Islem is in asylum. The last part of asylum. Oh, yeah, I was bad. calling it Wylum. Well, it's funny because even on the first page, it tells you right at the bottom, it's pronounced Islem. So uh, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, maybe I didn't I'm read no captions. Read. I didn't read the, uh, the, the text editor's is note. Very small. <laughs> the text is very small. They did hide it down there. Uh, but so this dude Nexus, he's hanging out uh, beneath the 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 ground, beneath the the surface of this moon planet, and uh, he's dreaming. He's floating in his hyperbaric chamber, suspended in liquids, and he's dreaming. He's having a, a the very definition of a wet dream. 
He's having yeah, a that, very that wet dream. Seem, doesn't seem comfortable. No, no, no. He's having a, he's having a bad time. And as we find out, he's uh, it's noted that he is not dreaming about women. Uh, he is not dreaming of good times. He's actually dreaming about history. All right. What, what, what's going on in history? Flashback a couple decades to see what was going on in Nexus's earlier life. Well, no, this wasn't his life. He, what you don't he's think doing so? is he's remember he, his well his dreams are the atrocities of the universe. I did wonder about mm-hmm. this because it does this this person is injured. So yeah, I guess it wasn't his life. So I actually I was I thought originally James that this was him, and then later in the comic you see this guy. Oh, we see this and I'll guy. Point, I'll point him out. He's in a crowd scene. I'll oh, point okay. Him out. This does make a lot more sense, though. This does pull things together. But this dude that we see in this scene has the same side abs as Nexus, and that's really how I he does gauge and the men. same hair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so twenty years earlier, in twenty four sixty one. Uh, there is a in Paraguay. There is a state security. Uh, well, it was it was actually a prison. They they're framing it as if it was some sort of like detention center, but really it's a prison. Look at and, uh, Paraguay making it to twenty four sixty one. I kind of knew they'd win. A lot of countries don't. Well, they also mm-hmm. they also put an X on their door. Really oh, there in, we go. Really Elon. Know, they knew what was happening. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what happened. Elon bought Paraguay. He bought Paraguay off the lithium mines or whatever. He's kept it going all these years. Good for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's this dude there, this Colonel Hector Gonzalez de Vega. He's the director there. Oh yeah, you're right. You're uh, the the dude who gets injured. His name is Fernando. Whereas Nexus's real name, um, I had to look this up, is Horatio Vladimir Hellpop. That's Nexus's real name. Hellpop. Hellpop. There is like an illusion. hell and then like pop like popsicle. Yep. We Great. actually see later in the book, there is an allusion to a, a, a hell pop who I assume was his dad. I don't know. But yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I yeah. do remember this now. So, Maybe they ran a company where they made like like a red hots, but they're on a stick. Oh, hell pops. No, no. I believe it was genocide. Oh, they made yeah. a lot of genocide. There's a lot of industry, a lot of money in genocide. There is. Uh, so... This uh, colonel, this uh, Paraguayan colonel, uh, he is uh, he uh, he's wants to bust this dude up, this Fernando dude, because I guess he wants to try. He wants to create a trade union among the textile workers, and uh, he's going to put his cigar out in his eye and have his men kill him and do terrible things to his wife and everything, and bust up the union. Mm-hmm. Which was funny to me because again, this was right before Reagan took office. So this was written. I don't know if this was written when Reagan was obviously going to become the president or what it was because at the time reagan was seen as like a pro-union guy and then he got in office and originally started and immediately started shutting down the unions but he was the president of the screen actors guild yeah which is why everybody thought that oh yeah Yeah. this guy he's gonna be totally pro-union and then he no no he shut that shit down immediately so i was wondering if this was maybe a little reference to that it hadn't happened yet but maybe it was a assumption that reagan was going to turn his back on the unions i don't know there was a shitload of banana republics at this time yeah did this stuff Oh, that's South delicious. America specifically. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, they had to send uh, Magna Conte in there to shut them down. Yeah, this might just legit be right. Oh, yeah, like I was just thinking a South American company yeah. or something, or company, South American country. Spot the difference. Would... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So that's our flashback. This guy is is murdered and uh, atrocities are committed, and this trade union is, is potential trade union is busted. Well, up. he's not murdered because I'm going to point him out. To oh, okay. You. Well, you know, we don't know how death works in the future. They're, to- they're torturing years. him. They're and, torturing uh, so, him. So, sure. like, here we have like gorilla karate Elvis, like yes. wrestling with <laughs> yeah. a, 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 Which, a gray. Yeah, honest a gray. to God. In all of the comic books that we've done, this is the most accept- acceptable monkey that we've had. I am almost right. okay with Monkey Elvis. Well, and this Monkey Elvis, uh, his name is Dave. Dave from Thune. Yeah. He, he's Dave he's the Monkey Elvis. And we find out some information about Dave from Thune later, but this is when I thought you guys would see this and immediately see the Badger, badger connection because we've seen a character that's almost identical to this guy in our last Badger adventure. Remember when they went to Limbo? Oh, the yeah. The dude working at the restaurant? Yeah. Right. So oh, that dude, yeah. yeah. So uh, that dude uh, that we saw in the Badger adventure was named Judah Maccabee. Right? Remember, his name was Judah Maccabee. Uh, somewhere along the lines of the Nexus book, this dude, uh, Dave from Thune, mentions that he has a son named Fred who changed his name to Judah after converting to Judaism. So, in, ah. so this is the father of the dude we see in the Badger. Oh, in wow. In-universe. 
in universe Damn. yeah i believe they actually did cross over the badger at one point directly so it's yeah so this, there's a little baron verse going on i guess so uh yeah this gray is sparring with uh dave from thune and then nexus uh bursts in look at he's definitely got a pump on he's looking fantastic sweaty covered in liquids from his hyperbaric chamber and uh he wants his costume laid out and pressed but not too soon because he still wants to show all those popping abs for a while first yeah, dude, he's sucking in that gut too. He's doing that bodybuilder yes. thing where you like bring your stomach up uh, up in oh, your ribs. That's so creepy. That's what it's he's so doing creepy. right there. But it'll get you some points. It'll yeah, get you well. some points. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna win. I skip dinner. <laughs> Suck. <laughs> I've been skipping dinner a lot lately. I have to admit, it's been. I'm a it's... breakfast skipper. No, no, I gotta have something. My stomach's hurting. My stomach's I heard hurting that. Uh, that it's because you haven't eaten dinner. Yeah. Yeah. I just heard <laughs> that it's easier for your. It's better for your digestion and just your overall health to skip breakfast than it would be to skip any other meal people say that and it's probably true but also those people probably aren't going to bed at 3 30 in the morning true so no, dude no like, they're not they sleep nine hours a day yeah it's it's fucking crazy who's got the I time do not. who's got the time no i'm a good uh, seven maybe oh my god seven sounds so luxurious <laughs> seven hours of sleep i'd say uh, yeah, I think I, I I probably get around seven unless I have to go to work. In which case, it's going to be like four. It's four. Yeah, it's, it's four. four. It's always a you're working. Four. It's, yeah, you're not sleeping more than four hours. Shit ain't happening. It's terrible. No. Uh, so Nexus is like, put put my my shit out. Lay out my suit. Let's get ready. I had a dream. I have to go enact vengeance because of this thing I saw in the dream. Yeah, but he don't know if it's real though. He's just he's just well, he's a lunatic. Well, apparently he's been following these dreams, and they've, he's at a success rate, rate so far enough so that these people will trust him. So whatever. So like uh, he's wearing a speedo. So in the uh, top left panel, is that his mm -hmm. pubes? I don't think so. I think it's just some some hatching. But let's yeah sure whatever. Look at that. Yeah, we could say it's his pubes. Hmm. Whatever, it was an adult comic. I think it's hatching, but hmm. yeah. Uh, so yeah, he wants. I I would honestly think he would laser. He'd laser yeah. his own pubes off. He's like, all he about lasers, we find out. He's he's into lasers. Yeah. He's into being aerodynamic. He doesn't want that shit getting in the yeah, way. Yeah, he's, like he's, like he's, he's like he's constantly preparing to swim. Right. And I, I guess your pubes will help uh, deflect certain bacteria, but at, the, at this 400 years in the future, I'm, I'm assuming all that shit's been solved. Yeah, it's all been solved. Yeah. You know, he's breathing in this. So he lives on a, uh, like a base on yeah, this moon. Yeah, moon base. And uh, so, yeah, it's all climate controlled. So I imagine there is no bacteria. Yeah, it's probably great. I'd love to be up there. Mike would hate like, it. It, it. So while he's on this uh, base, I guess everyone who lives with him is a refugee of some kind. And they're right. constantly bothering him to take revenge for them. So it's worth noting that Nexus, while he does allow these political refugees to stay on his ship, he doesn't really take care of them or console them or anything he just lets them be there he doesn't really feel like he needs to go around helping them necessarily it seems like at the, at the end of the book uh at the end of this comic there's like a description of how his little civilization works and it seems like the refugees on their own are expanding the base yeah for him. and it seems like they're trying to force him to be a leader and he keeps saying no he just likes fucking i shit have up. no urge or need to do this yeah i just like to bring unholy vengeance Okay, in this walking scene here. Sure. If you look on the left side. Oh, yeah, you're there right. He there Fernando. he is. There's... And he got a hand chopped off, too. Oh, Both hands. Wow. Chopped. There he He's is. Dealt with some shit. Wow, that's good. That's good continuity. Very good I like catch that. catch shave. I mean, he should be especially happy because Nexus is going out specifically to avenge him. He's just like, uh, he, everyone's just waiting for their turn for Nexus to dream about their p specific situation. Oh, I hope he dreams about mm -hmm. me next. But it's worth noting, he hates these dreams. Nexus can't stand mm -hmm. these fucking dreams. And he won't even tell people what he sees in them because they're so horrific. But, you know, California dreaming. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Nexus uh, gets all geared up and everybody is cheering him on. And uh, he uh, heads off, and nobody knows where he's going, but we know where he's going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's going to uh, a country or uh, a planet called Constantinow. Constantinow. That's, That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And he's going there because the uh, per the uh, Paraguayan colonel that we saw earlier, he's now here. He's fleeing from his atrocities. He's changed his name and everything, and he's just known as an innocent person here. I think he's known as a politician or something here. Mm -hmm. And possibly a good guy? Uh, well, people like him on this planet, but this planet seems like a shithole. Yeah. You know? It's it's probably a horrible total. No, it looks nice. Look, there's trees. That's you're seeing you're seeing the nice part. You're not seeing the slums. 
Yeah, well, why I, are I, you assuming about slums? Yeah, but I live on a planet ro- like that right now. With no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, don't, nice I don't care for this planet. Like, you know. Yeah, and it's a shithole planet. All right. As, well, we, as uh, we've established, every place is terrible. Well, uh, so like, well, then this establishes like, what's true in real life: is every political leader is uh, some kind of horrible monster. Pretty and, close. Uh, they're laughing and having a good time. And then all of a sudden they hear that, uh, like, they start panicking because they know who Nexus is. Everyone throughout the galaxy and the cosmos knows about Nexus. So, like, they're like, hey, Nexus is here. So everyone's like, okay, every man for himself, run. Yeah, they know shit's going down because somebody has sent this dude uh, a wine from uh, uh, Paraguayan grapes dated to to 2461 when the atrocity happened. And this dude immediately knows something's up. And then, yeah, it's, it's, Mm -hmm. it's Nexus. And he immediately goes, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, yeah they, they know. They know this is hopeless. Like, everyone there is like this horrible piece of shit. They're horrible pieces of shit. They're very well dressed. They're well, very well fed. Um, the, 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 the dude has a, a smoking uh, Spanish wife, though. Oh, my goodness. There is a, Nexus is like God's wrath. Yeah, he's like the specter. Like, how, like, you know how everyone's a piece of shit in this in this scene is because mm-hmm. they have no idea why he's there, but they just know that they c- could potentially be the one he's after. Yeah, that's a good point. That they're, these are all bad dudes that are willing to work together because they know that one of them is going to get fucked right down. The rest of them are going to probably get fucked later once so he gets like, around to those dreams. Next, so the security shows up with, like, a bazooka, like a space bazooka. Yeah. Sure. And... With, like, the swat of his hand, There's like, nothing. Nexus is able to just, like, blow everyone away. He opens the door. Yeah. He blows everyone out of the ground. With Z's. With sleep? Did he, pat- yep. Did he like, make everyone go to sleep? He made everybody really bored, and they all fell asleep. Well, it's like, it's like Z's, and then... And T's. A, a T's. So it's like an electric buzz. Yeah. I, yeah, he probably has electromagnetic powers, is uh, my guess. Oh, I guess that makes more sense than sleep powers. Right, right. Especially because he's got a lightning bolt on him. Like, yeah. like all of our best heroes, like the Flash and uh, Shazam and um, Black Lightning. Black Lightning? They've all got Jinx. that. Jinx. Yeah. Yes? Jinx. I said it oh, at the same time jinx. as you. Jinx. There right, we go. Right, jinx. Uh, so Nexus shows up and he's like, dude, I came for you. And everybody goes, oh, thank God. Yeah, they thank all God. like went back to eat. They went <laughs> oh, back to dinner. Because it doesn't seem like Nexus necessarily, he's not trying to help anything. He's just trying to rid himself of these dreams. Yeah, what if like he keeps having the dream until he kills the guy? Who's, I think that's like, what guilty. it is. Oh, yeah. I, I so, so, he has to right the yeah. wrong. Yeah, so he oh my God, it's that. Quantum Leap. Except, yeah. he doesn't, except he doesn't care. Quantum Leap actually cared and had some sort of like soul. Nexus just wants to, to be done with this whole dream problem. No, no. Think, Dr. Sam Beckett is just waiting for the leap home. Do you yeah. think Sam Beckett, Dr. Sam Beckett has a soul, has no soul? Because Nexus doesn't no, seem to have a soul. No, I he has a soul, but it's not like he's living for I it. Don't think, he's just trying. He's just hoping that the next leap is the leap home. Yeah, I don't think Nexus home. has a soul. I think Nexus is a soulless bastard as just trying to... But we know he's a human. We do know he's a human. Well, hum- a lot of humans don't have souls. I know quite a few of them. Some of them uh, are my neighbors. <laughs> you gotta love thy neighbor. Dude, I have a dude next door who plays guitar nonstop, which wouldn't bother me so much, except that he clearly has never learned a chord. He's just playing like random squiddly squaw notes with no beginning or end or form for hours and hours and hours it's insane that's how you learn no you, james you should go tell him that if you if he doesn't stop you're gonna kill him yeah, yeah i'm gonna go nexus on him no you can't you don't learn by playing random notes you learn by learning theory and learning chords and all that boring shit and then you get to do your squiddly squaws i don't no, care what i don't care what any of my neighbors are doing if they bother me in any way i tell them like hey if you bother me ever we're gonna have a serious problem yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've definitely tattled on this. I won't necessarily tattle on that because at least it's kind of sort of productive. It's not just being, uh, you know, it's not just having a party. He actually probably, it's probably a bit of a loser because all I hear is guitar all the time. Like that can't really be a, a guy who's tearing it up at the clubs. And he's a grown man. Man, I, I really know. hope he's not a fan. No, I, don't, a, I hope yeah. that somehow one well, of our, our 300 listeners... Maybe, maybe <laughs> you'll, know so if the, you'll, you'll know if the guitar playing either stops happening or gets better. Yeah. No, he's gotten better. He doesn't play at 2 a.m. anymore. Yeah, he did used to play Crank It Up at 2 a.m. Uh, anyway, Nexus, uh, so he fucks up this whole place, and the dude's new wife comes up uh, and tries to stop Nexus, and Nexus is actually able to control his beam to go around her and kill the dude, so I guess uh, he's not necessarily, he's not wantonly killing people. 
It is like the beam is physically there. Like it's not like a Jean Grey Magneto thing where they're just having like, you yeah. know, they're 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 creating an effect that no one else around them can see. It's just for us to know that something's happening. Mm -hmm. She sees the beam of light go yeah, she, around her to yeah. kill her husband. Mm -hmm. She watches it happen. And he gets scorched, he dies, and she says, well, why? He, he, was, he didn't do any evil, he was a good man. And uh, Nexus just says, I could tell you the truth, but it's, it's not worth my time. And yeah. he leaves. Yeah, based. Yeah, pretty, pretty based. Arrive, fuck shit up, leave. Yep. Yeah. Everybody's trying to shoot him on the way out, and he's just not having any of it. The manager comes up and says, hey, you destroyed my restaurant. Nexus says, send me a bill. He goes, well, that's not really good enough. Like, you've kind of ruined my reputation, and nobody's going to come here again. Nobody's ever going to come to this restaurant again because Nexus comes here and fucks people up. Yeah, and, but he uh, tells this and guy. who made you judge, jury, and execution? And he tells him, uh, I act in self-defense. He says it very Which quiet, Which I still though. don't understand. Well, because, because he's, he's trying to yeah, get rid of his dreams. Yeah, he's nightmares, yeah. Yeah, this is the only way to, to, to purge him of his dreams. So this is a oh, self-defensive thing. Oh, he means thing. as in defense of himself, yeah, this is why not I say, against... Yeah, this is why I say he's not doing oh, it to help okay. anybody. He doesn't care about helping anybody necessarily. Yeah, and uh, that's the end of chapter one. He's he using it in a way that you don't normally use it. Right. I Sure. And that's the end of chapter one. It's a three-chapter book. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Well, as logic would have it, chapter two follows immediately thereafter. Yeah, with a, with a what happened before, even though I mean, it seems like this nice. was written as a comic strip. It could have been published in a magazine in like three separate parts or something. That's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. Because like they give us a recap after something that yeah. happened in the last page. Two pages. Yeah. Well, I don't mind seeing it again. You know, uh, it's also interesting that it's hundreds of years in the future, but they're still using our current slang. Mm -hmm. Which just confirms my belief that like this is the most awesome time to be alive. Yes, this is the we we yeah. we've discovered the best slang. Yeah, we, we've got the best stuff. Uh, I don't see any mes mention of uh, no cap or bussin yet. No, I'm sure because those... it sucked. It doesn't it doesn't survive. <laughs> oh man, I the really... millennials had the best shit. I bet on the wrong horse there. I was really going in on that. I was starting to throw in a lot of that. Yeah, no, uh, bro, it's gone. Does Nexus oh, use shit. it? Then no. Yeah, if Nexus doesn't use it, I'm not using it. Chapter two begins with this lady, Sundra Peel, which I guess is the lady from the cover of the book, even though that's really not how we see her in the book. She made me think mm -hmm. of fruit the entire time. Oh, man. Between that and the Banana Republics, I am starving. Yeah, right. I would love <laughs> some fruit. Oh, man. And so uh, she is uh, orbiting the moon, that mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, island moon that, that uh, Nexus lives on. And she's like, dude, I got no oxygen. I'm going to die unless you let me in. And he's like, you idiot. You fucking He's moron. like, fine, let her in, because yeah. she's dumb. Woman driver. Okay, didn't say that. But uh, Mike Barron may have said it, but I didn't say it. Uh, so uh, she lands, and uh, he's like, hey, you're kind of stupid, aren't you? He's like, no, actually, I figured that you wouldn't let me die. I'm actually a reporter here. See, look at my plastic card that I carry around 400 years in the future, uh, letting you know that I'm a reporter uh, for a news network, and I want to interview you about Nexus's uh, impact on the galaxy. I'm not actually stupid. You know, uh, Mike Barron being like a right wing guy makes sense now because Nexus is a fucking libertarian. Yeah, and yeah. the name of the news network it, it comes out like the initials come out to bias. Yeah, B -I -A -S. yeah. He was. Pro well, you know what? This is pretty. He really got ahead of fake news. This was 1981. Dude, Mike Barron's awesome. <laughs> he, he, may, he may just be conservative like conservative is not necessarily right wing or libertarian Bro, he, so made, he made a libertarian superhero without anybody noticing he snuck this one in snuck Dude. it in he, he, he's he's super he's like super self-sufficient and wealthy doesn't take care of anybody else and he's all powerful yeah i'm imagining eventually he has some sort of weakness that's and the strange, only reason but... he does good is because it's annoying him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he, he'd like to get some sleep and he doesn't Bro. like the yeah. way that other people are doing things again you just said he's self-sufficient he want he's yeah. doing it for himself yeah Bro, nexus is a sigma male he does not want any leadership in his area <laughs> yeah he wants yep. no government telling nope. him what to do oh everybody my god can, everybody can take care of their own garbage the way they see fit and if bears show up they can deal with that i don't care own. what you do that's fine i swear <laughs> i heard a, i swear i heard a story that there was some sort of like libertarian yeah town yep. that was like an experiment That's what I was thinking and about. then because of that they didn't pay like taxes for like trash and stuff yep. so nobody was picking so bears it up were showing and then up. they had a bear yeah, yeah, yeah then they had a bear yeah, problem criminals drug addicts and bears descended on the town 
in a libertarian town. And they're still like, well, this still works. It's still a good option. Like, like they got the they cut the police down to one guy, and he couldn't answer calls because the police car was permanently broken down. <laughs> That's one of my favorite oh. stories. And then, and then bears atta- started attacking the people funny. in the town. It, that's how it ended. It ended with like, and then they were bear attacked constantly. Yeah, they were liberal the bears. Liberal bears coming to attack this libertarian paradise. Dude, like the Nexus, he's like, I'll, you can do whatever you want. Just leave me alone. I mean, it is. I do want to mention, though, that libertarianism, it, and, until recent years, it was a very different thing. Yeah. And like libertarians actually ran the first female presidential candidate. So they right, used well, freedom. to be. Mm-hmm. They used to be a very progressive organization, and then it just turned into like alt writers in disguise. I don't know what the fuck happened. It's just a bunch of I, I, Ayn Rand people. It's just like uh, take care of your own shit, and if you can't mm-hmm. do it, like it's just this selfishness. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe there's something to be said for selfishness. We're gonna great for Nexus, hey, except for those hey, dreams. You know what? I used to be the like when I was a young person. I was like, we gotta have a revolution, change society. And then I got older. I'm like, oh, that'll never happen. This is just the way it is. I do think that we're coming to the end of a certain phase in uh, in uh, our species. And I think it's gonna be a good transition. I think it's gonna be a painful transition, but I do think that we're about to, we're about to leap forward. It's just gonna- I think we are smack dab in the middle of Kali Yuga and oh. we are just suffering. We have another 100,000 years of just this. Yeah, soon. I said soon, hundred thousand years. I'm thinking long plan. I'm looking. I'm looking. There's a long timeline. You know no, what I'm I don't saying? know. That's I don't know I how think. long it is. I do think. I do think we are. Listen, this is for my other podcast, Future Talk, uh, that doesn't exist yet. Uh, no, I do believe that we are coming to a point, and I do see things that I believe are a little weird and scary and uncomfortable now, but are ultimately the tools of creating a better society once we learn how to use them better. And I do think that it will facilitate a big leap forward in our in our human consciousness. And I think things are going to be much, much better. It's just going to be kind of shitty getting there. I think it's going to be like this comic. We're just going to have better shit with all the same problems. Yeah, that's really all I want. I just want some better shit. So like uh, the reporter, like she, uh, she, like, real, like she then t- tells Nexus that, oh, I tricked you. I'm actually a reporter. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. Did you know that there are Nexus brand laser cannons? Yep. And she asks if he gets royalties for that. And he says, bitch, I don't fucking care. He's like, I don't care what people do. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go record my libertarian podcast. <laughs> I got to go do an interview with the Federalist. I'm showing, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm, in, I'm being interviewed by Alex Jones. <laughs> Well, I mean, a lot of intelligent people like Alex Jones. You need to listen to Alex Jones. That's right. well, Alex Jones not only <laughs> has been replatformed, but he is going to be hosting a show on X. Oh, wow. I'm going to watch every fucking episode of that. I'm so excited for Alex Jones. Elon really rescued that platform. Oh, God, he sure did. It's better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, I, look, this is one of those things where I don't have to care about it because I'm not even on fucking x i don't care Whatever. i just like things just i just i just like that stuff <laughs> I, yeah, like I, don't, that, I don't i like that people no, are like this i truly don't like it i truly don't i don't I, I can find the humor in it from a weird black humor kind of standpoint but no i don't, uh, I don't i'm, like it I'm swimming in that pool james no I'm, I'm hoping for a better world but if i gotta be stuck here right now i'm at least gonna get a laugh out of it now i watched those zeitgeist movies in the early 2000s <laughs> and i was like we need to do this what these so, guys say and then it didn't happen i'm like ah well it might as well have a good time before i die <laughs> so they're uh, detecting that there's a solar storm coming and so this lady sundra peel she's not gonna be able to get out of here soon so nexus says fine we'll put you up in here i'm not cruel you can stick around for a while until the solar storm ends and then you got to get your shit and go it's like before you but before you go would you like to see my collection of action figures <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of vintage kenner star wars original run action figures here she's like uh, that's a lot of dragon ball z he goes yes <laughs> i'm glad you noticed there's no such thing as a little dragon ball z everyone goes full on on that those casual dragon ball z fans that's me you're a casual i'm a casual i, it's, I mean it's fine it's it's gonna it's gonna accumulate. It's gonna it's either it's all or nothing as far as I've seen, and I'm on the uh, I side. can see why people like it. Yeah. So uh she says, Well, can I interview the people on her ship? And he goes, Bitch, I don't care uh, how don't many times. None of these people work for me. Everyone here is free. Yeah, these are all free agents. They're all free to do whatever they want. Uh I can, have my money. <laughs> they can figure out how they're gonna get their own water. I don't care. Uh, and so she goes over and she decides to talk to Dave from Thune and Dave from Thune gives a little bit of his background. Turns out that he used to own a bike factory, he made uh-huh. bicycles, right? Yep. 
And I guess, and this is where we actually get into a pretty progressive part of the of the book that makes me think that maybe either Mike Barron has changed his politics or they're more complicated than we think. I think they're more complicated. Like sure. You can, you can have a certain philosophy, but still be mortified by the atrocities of others. Sure. Absolutely. And and that's kind of what happens is, is the racial purity party takes over and they come in here and they say, hey, listen, uh, you're, we're going to mark anyone. I, I guess uh, Dave from Thune's planet, people have seven, eight, whatever kind of digits. And it's like, we're going to mark all the people that have seven digits. All right. We don't like them. They're inferior. We're not going to use them. Uh, and, so, uh, uh, you know, what I'm thinking here, like, yeah. you th it seems like the, like, you'd think f that they're aliens. So, like, the idea is, like, if humans go to a planet with different environmental conditions and they breed with each other, they adapt to their planet, they'll look drastically different from humans from Earth pretty quickly. So I think that's what all these people are, is just they're just human, human colonizers that have been okay. on these planets for, like, hundreds of years. Okay, well, I could see you mean talking about the racial purity party because I mean, just, just like how there's normal humans from Earth, but then there's these right. other creatures that act just like humans, but they look different. But okay, they have human I features. Think that's just comic book physics. Well, we gotta have a good time. Well, the odds of like human beings finding like sentient, intelligent animal life life mm -hmm. on other planets is pretty low. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen, guys. Give so it up. It's more likely that we, like, after hundreds of years, humans will just look like they're from the planets they colonized. Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, I think, that was, I think that's what happened in Star Trek. Yeah, I do try to base my assumptions about the future on Star Trek. If you're hey, if you're hopeful for like humanity, Star Trek, is a good, Star Trek would be yep. the one you want. I like Star Trek because it's an action show about diplomacy and like, science who, and who reading. Else could, yeah, exactly. Who who could make that work and actually make it entertaining? Gene Captain, Roddenberry. Captain Picard made me want to read and get smart. You ever see Captain Picard uh, when they first... Because uh, Gene Roddenberry did not want uh, Patrick Stewart as Captain Picard because he didn't think that the captain should be bald. He figured baldness would have been cured by that point. And so there is like a screen test of Patrick Stewart wearing a bad wig. Oh, it's so bad. Yeah, yeah. it is pretty bad. Uh, anyway, so Dave from Thune says, well, I didn't care that the Racial Purity Party did this because you need eight eight digits to make a bicycle so i we really didn't care so fuck it uh so then the racial purity very party progressive. very progressive well, pro well it's a thought of like they I, they didn't come for the, the first they came so for the care. seven yeah. digits yeah, yeah. yeah that's absolutely what it is and so after that they decide hey guess what the racial purity party says you're not making bikes anymore it's an ore refinery and uh he says he says get out i don't want anything to do with this and so they throw dave from thune in jail no, well, it's a prison they made within his own factory. Yeah, well, it's the same difference. But yes, within his own factory, they turned it into a prison. So uh, the whole thing becomes a living hell. It's awful. But one day they pull Dave... Straight up throwing the Nazi salute there. Oh, yeah. They got a little Heil Hitler going on there. Sure. Well, I mean... It's a Roman salute. It, you know, was the, the Heil Hitler based on a Roman salute? Yeah, that's that what, what it came was. From? Yeah, that's why oh, the Germans did it. Yeah, huh. but... Like, it's their thing now. It's like every. Yeah, it's like a, it's exactly. like a Led, it's like a Led Zeppelin song. Yeah, <laughs> it just it's, it it's, belongs to them. Yeah, it's like they got the swastika too. I'm Fuck sorry. you, muddy waters. Yeah, sorry, that's Buddhists. We like, that's their they, thing now. They fucked it. Yeah. Uh, so one day they pull Dave from Thune out of uh, prison and they take him to the new manager of the ore refinery, the ore factory, and it's it's the kingpin. It's a yeah, fat it's white kingpin. dude. Yeah. Yep. It looks like he. So he's smoking, but it looks like. Smoking bothers him. Yeah, he just does it for the the appeal for the look. Yeah, he of it. does it because he, so he looks like a cool. badass business guy running like a a, a, cigar, a sweatshop yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But Asuchio. really, really, he hates it and it irritates him. Look, he's yeah. sweating. Oh yeah, no, that's he's... because uh, Dave spit on him. Well, he's got the meat sweats. It's been a, it's been a while since he's uh. Looks like the smoke's getting in his eye. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So he tells them, he tells Dave, listen, nobody in here knows how to run a factory. So we'll give you some money. We'll give you some privileges and you can run the factory. Dave from Thune doesn't listen to us at all. Spits in the dude's face. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so they um, put him to work hard labor. Hard, hard labor. And he realizes, oh, fuck, this is much worse. And so every night he wished for death. But then one day, Nexus, apparently he was younger at the time and he was yeah. less arrogant. So they know what a, like, kind of a dickhead he is. Yeah, everybody's aware of it. And so he uh, comes in and just starts killing everybody. He kills everybody. He even says, like, he's, yeah, he's less self-assured. He says, tell me where the manager is. I won't hurt anyone unless they get in my way. So he's a little more reasonable. Well, he's just looking for the manager, the guy he dreamt about. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess we didn't see that dream, but yeah, it, it follows that he had a dream about this manager. And he's like, "All right, so like, everyone just chill out. I'm Nexus. Yes, I'm that one from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he, uh, he thinks that's what he's famous for. Well, yeah, that's in like, the future. I mean, <laughs> it's fuse. Like, uh, <laughs> it's been four hundred years. The liberals are running the galaxy into the ground. <laughs> and so Nexus, po- star of podcasts." Uh, he arrives <laughs> and he starts <laughs> fucking shit up and, uh, he goes, he finds the manager and uh, we don't actually see him get killed. I don't think, but you know, we logical assumption based on, Nexus. well, this is Dave's story. So Dave doesn't see him do anything. He just yeah. see him come and fuck shit up. And then he comes out of the manager's office and everyone there, uh, begs him to so come like, with. We're just going to get killed. We're going to get killed anyway. So we got to come with you. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, all right, well, even here it says he fit as many people in his ship as he could Meaning he left the rest behind and well, never went back for I'm him. I'm a little confused about that because Dave says he fit as many as he could and he's been going back ever since. Yeah, he's been taking them ever since. I'm not sure if he's suggesting that he went back and grabbed them. Oh, more, I missed that. All right. Good for or, him. I, yeah, I'm not really sure. So he's a, he's a complex guy, Morley. On that same page and the bottom right corner is like baby Shrek. Oh, there's a little Shrek. We got a little Shrek in there. You know, I've never seen a Shrek movie. Uh, you probably should. They're all great. Cinematic masterpieces, originally voiced by uh, Chris Farley, and then he died. Really? It was originally mm-hmm. done by Chris Farley, and then Mike Myers came in, and then Mike Myers wasn't using the Scottish accent. He recorded it all with like his normal voice, and then they re-recorded it again when he decided he wanted the Scottish accent. Oh, it cost millions of dollars, uh, from what I remember. I'm sure it cost a lot to to redo the vocals twice. Yeah. So anyway, though, that's uh, that's the story. And then so Sundra's like, well, tell me about his dreams. He's like, oh, dude, he doesn't tell me about his dreams. That's where he gets his power. That tells him where to go. But he doesn't want to talk about it. We don't know anything about it. Don't know nothing about those dreams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're horrific. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. and and Nexus is in his room uh, watching Alex Jones. <laughs> he's a big fan uh, because, yeah, he's still watching uh, podcasts. Because now and, he can again. Yeah, he's <laughs> it's watching Because Elon Musk and, brought him back. X broadcast from the year 2024. <laughs> Nexus is just watching X and he's just like, man, I love X. Well, he's watching broadcast from 400 years ago, but by the time it reaches him, it's it's current. No, they're still alive. Elon and Alex Jones, they're still alive. Still They've alive still been around for 400 years? Oh, good for 400 them. 400 years. We need somebody. We need somebody to stick around. Well, that's who inspired um, Nexus to do the right thing. <laughs> So Nexus is having some wine. He's having a good time. And he's told, hey, look, there's an object uh, in orbit. And we got to we got to see what's going on with this. So he heads down to the bridge. He's a good looking man. I don't know why he wears that whole head cap thing. Because like, show it he's, off. Because he's practical. He's got to wear like a bodysuit and protect man, himself. Look at his hairline, though. He looks great. I know. He looks great. We're well, not going to draw him like Captain Picard. Gene Roddenberry. No, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, Gene R- he, Roddenberry did like backtrack later and go like, well, you know, I... I believed in him being bald and i thought like the future nobody would care about that and I'm like dude you're 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 backtracking because i mean he never super uh, popular picard never not fucked yeah he's a cool dude like yeah he was a cool dude and then there was that time after he quit his job on the enterprise and he opened up that erotic bakery yeah where he made cakes <laughs> of women going to the bathroom <laughs> mm-hmm. see if anyone could follow the logic of that story <laughs> God, that's a funny sketch. It's so funny, dude. It's not even a good sketch. It's no, just it's, him. it's Patrick Stewart's delivery. It's just so, sure. there's so little to it. Like, but it's just so fucking funny. But it's too late. He's already seen everything. <laughs> yeah, that one's good too. Also because of Patrick Stewart's delivery. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm glad you caught it, Mike. Yeah. yeah. That Ricky oh. Gervais show, right? Yeah. 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 Extras. Extras. That was good. I'll look that up in the, uh, in the edit. When, when, I'm, when I'm looking for things to distract me from actually doing the work of completing the podcast. Oh, I do that so, too. Yeah, find something to do. <laughs> it's really important that I look this up right now. Bro, I'm like making YouTube and like a whole hour of me doing it is gone because like I went to go look for something and I got distracted and it just uh, disappeared. It's a lot of work that goes into it. More than needs to. And then I'm like, this is taking forever. So, <laughs> so this spaceship... Uh, they're they're sending a message to Nexus. They're like, dude, we got a proposition for you. Listen to what we have to say. And he says, there's nothing I want. There's nothing I want. He's like, well, what about what about getting rid of your dreams? What if we can get rid of those dreams? And he's well, like, oh, I care about I this. Want. That actually is something I would like. So, uh, what, what 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 what's what's the deal? That's on the it? one thing I want. That, okay, there's one there's thing. One? Stop helping people. <laughs> I really would like to stop helping people. 
Uh, and I would like to get Gary Johnson elected finally. Please, can we get Gary Johnson in office? Yeah, and uh, no. No. <laughs> it's like, no, this, that's, no the, dude. that's beyond even our powers. Bro, no. <laughs> it's impossible. Like, I get that idea of like, you know, uh, if you deprive people of things, they'll be motivated to take care of it themselves. Like, there's truth to that, obviously. Yeah. But on a national scale, <laughs> you know, he, he I don't know, man. tried very hard to get elected just on letting people have pot. Like, for a while, it was just like, dude, I'll let everybody have as much pot as they want. Just make me president. And it just make it us so the. But yeah, we all have pot, but we can't get to the stores because <laughs> the roads are all fucked up. Yeah, I can't breathe the air. Uh, so these guys say, like, you know, I'll tell you about it. You got to teleport us in, beam us in, and we'll tell you what the deal is. So he goes, all right, fine. Beams these guys in, right? They beam in, and the first dude, like, he's got a fucking goatee. He does. He's got uh, an actual goatee, not a Van Dyke. People confuse yeah. the two. A goatee does not have a mustache. Not one of those people. Well, you got it right. He's just got the mustache. That's, a, right. that's a goatee. No, the but Van... I mean, he's got the uh, beard part, not the mustache. Yeah, the beard part. I'm sorry. Maybe I said it wrong. But the yeah. beard part is the goatee. When you add the mustache, it becomes a Van Dyke, but people think it's the same thing. Yeah. And it's not. It's Do you think like when he like, because like one guy has a full helmet. Looks like a so, knight. Like, do you think maybe like they got the option of what kind of helmets they were going to wear that day? Yes. And he was just like, I just grew this fucking uh, goatee. Uh, I'm thinking more of like, oh, who were those guys that we looked at a while ago? Those um, the, 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 the light dudes, the hologram guys. What the fuck were their names? I don't know. I don't even know I what was... you're talking about. The hologram Alvin guys. Simon where we Theodore? Got, where we got, no, it's where we got Merklin for, from. Oh. Uh, the visionaries? Visionaries, Visionaries. Yeah. Like, yeah. Remember how they all had arbitrary costumes just from stuff they found? So yeah. that's kind of the feel I got. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, he definitely wanted to show off that facial hair. He finally grew it out, and it's looking nice and thick. And Dude, he's got, he's, he's he's got a it. fucking uh, MP3 player on his belt. He's got a Zune. Dude, he's got a zoom. Are you going to travel through space without your tunes? Yeah, no, absolutely not, dude. He's got to hear that Xanadu soundtrack. Dude, yeah. Me yeah, either. Yeah. I got to listen to my Uriah Heap as I travel through <laughs> the universe. Uh, that's the end of chapter two. So we enter into the final chapter. And this time we didn't get a synop- We didn't get a recap from chapter two. No, because so. maybe because the first one was supposed to be a comic strip. And then after it didn't happen, he's like, all right, I was making it into a full comic. But he's like, oh, crap, but I already put in chapters. Ah, uh, I do like a good chapter, though. It gives a class, a little sophistication to your book. I mean, yeah, yeah and it just, it, it's traditional story set up. He just labeled it. Yeah, for I sure. Guess it's good as, like, if you forget your plays. You're like, I oh, was at chapter three. I was at chapter three. Yeah, that's that's how books have survived for so long. You know, but comic books kind of don't normally do that, is my point. They don't normally. They don't normally, yeah. but uh, because they're, they're 20 pages and they're just designed to amuse dumb kids. Like, you know, you know we only need them now. Um, so Nexus is talking to these three dudes and says, uh, we want to hire you to kill somebody, a sentient being. We want to for someone. And he's like, I, that's not, that's not the kind of thing I do. Why don't I just kill you guys instead? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Classic Nexus move. Yeah. 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 yeah I can. Damn. You're in my property. Yeah. yeah. You're on <laughs> yeah, you my, can. you're on my land. You Fucking can. Uno reversed that. Yep, that I am a sovereign citizen. Sovereign citizen. Oh my God. I love the sovereign citizen. Sometimes I go down a rabbit hole and just look at what the sovereign citizen. Oh, uh, I do. Too. Sometimes I just argue with people using that argument, knowing I don't like agree with it or dude, believe in it. <laughs> the sovereign citizens will, will argue that like, if you sign a document in a mirror, it doesn't count. All kinds of crazy things. Oh, uh, is it the scarecrow law where it's like, there's a corporation made in your name at birth. Yeah, I've never yeah. heard it called that, but yeah, that, that the idea is they believe that on, if you look at your like a, your birth certificate or official documents your name is in all caps yeah that means you're dead you're not a living person they're saying yeah. that that is the name of the corporation that yeah. the government owns in your name it's not yeah. you and so anytime that that is referenced it doesn't apply to you which is horseshit it's just yeah, if you ever read. go to court you just have to say like that is not me yep and you would think after all these years of it never working once libertarians would realize that that doesn't well that doesn't, point, happen, it doesn't matter anyway the government's going to do whatever they want they are, but it's again that was it was just that way for clarity. It's easier yeah, to maritime, see the names. Maritime admiralty Stupid. law and all that stuff. Oh, it's, I love it. It's fantastic. I love quoting all that shit at people. They're a lot and of fun, then, and they get all mad. <laughs> I would have loved your debate class. Well, yeah, you you would have again. You would have failed it, but Dude, you would have had a great time. I would have won every argument. It would have been great. You wouldn't have won I can any bullshit. of these arguments. I can. I'll bullshit at any time. Any. Anything you want. Yeah. All <laughs> you right. Tell me. I'll I'll look into it a little bit and then I'll just riff it and it'll be great. All right. So the dudes are like, all right, we can take away your dreams. Let's go. Let's go sit down, have a talk. 
because uh, sitting down is fucking awesome. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah. So he tell they, they he asks how are you gonna get rid of my dreams. He goes, well, we're gonna give you a full time job. <laughs> yeah, it's called America. Nice. And so uh, they're like, you know, let's also bring that woman there. It's a little bit, a little too much of a sausage party. Let's have that uh, reporter lady in there as well. Well, I think he did that uh, purposely because he's trying to gauge whether or not these guys are shady. And the idea of inviting a reporter along Mm -hmm. to see how they react to that is, uh, I think, was part of his strategy. Uh, I thought he was just trying to demonstrate his value to this woman. Oh, This female. Look at this giant table I have. And I have the biggest chair. Yep. And, my, you know, they're out. my main letter is on the thing. Well, and they're out in space. So, like, you know, she's thinking, like, what's she going to do? She can't. Is she going to say no to him? What's she going to go? There's nowhere to go. The implication is something might go wrong for her if she says no. Now, nothing's going to happen, of course, but she doesn't know that. Yeah. That, so they're like, I don't like her. I don't like her, bud. And he's like, yeah, I know. I don't like women either. Want to know why? Because we're libertarians, too. Yep, yep. Because yep, when, yep. when they first show up, they say it's honored to meet you because they listen to his podcast. Yep. And then they all open up their fedora trunk, and they all put on a nice fedora, like, so and they sat down to meet you. at their big end table. So these guys are representatives of the pan-galactic... Uh, trade union and mm-hmm. nexus hears the word union he's like i don't like these guys <laughs> well in fairness then why did he go i guess so he, he rescued fernando or he rather he avenged fernando because that colonel uh was w- hurt him because he was trying to create a union so why would nexus that suggests that nexus is sympathetic to unions nope, he's just trying to get get rid of dreams. those dreams yeah that's so it. he'll go against his own beliefs he'll just be like i gotta I, well he lives out in the middle of space like how they run their planets is yeah. none of his business nothing is more important to me than stop i have i will i will go as the wind blows if it'll stop these dreams that's another reason why like i think that all the weird alien guys are just adapted to humans yeah. is because they still have the same basic kind of idea about stuff. Like they got generals, they have language that, yeah. you know, like they yeah. speak English just fine. They have their, their little military uniforms and whatnot. Yep. Uh, yeah. You may very well be right. I mean, again, where do you get that zoom? You know, right. Uh, right. which look is kind dude. of a mother box as well. Yeah, look at that dude. It's six G. Uh, yeah. And so he, he turns on his zoom and he, uh, projects an image of this dude, Zephyr mirrored. He's a dictator of the Hassian republics and he's, yeah, a, he's and, a bad uh, dude. Nexus, uh, Nexus's guy goes, that's the guy who, f- it was a dick to me. Like he's <laughs> killed thousands every day. Do it. Kill him. And Nexus is like, shut your goddamn yeah. mouth. You shut the fuck up. There I don't care about your problems at all. It, you it, never it, tell me what to do. I'm a sovereign citizen. You see that <laughs> name there? See that? That is a uppercase and then lowercase e uh, nexuses. Yes. Okay? It's uh, the, it's only the first letter is capital. I'm a living sovereign man. <laughs> I'm going to put the uh, Star Spangled Banner playing behind him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then... Um, yeah, so these guys get really up in arms, really unprofessional. They just start yelling at Nexus, you got to kill this guy. And Nexus tells them, yeah, sit, your, sit your ass down. I'll do look what I how, want. Look how like, in their place they got put. He's Nexus. Right, yeah. He will scorch their eyes out of their skulls. <laughs> yeah. That and he's like their landlord. <laughs> yeah, so he's already got a lot of power in the situation. Like they're living there at his behest yeah. or his uh, whim. He can eject them at any time. Yeah. Not my, get out of my house, but we're in space. Not my problem. Yep. Yep. He'll do it. He'll do it. So he tells these dudes, all right, I need some, well, first of all, tell me how you're going to deal with this whole dream thing. How are you going to get rid of my dreams? And, and they made talk that to, joke while getting a job. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. We already kind of covered that. Well, within the context of the, you know, I guess I'll, I guess I'll give it one of these here. Yeah. What really happened here? Uh, within the context of the comic book, uh, they, 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 Turns out that they have access to this brain surgery repair thing, this chair built on. It says built on Johnson's thought chair, which I don't know if that's a something that I should know about. Johnson's yeah. thought chair? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but, the, but we're really uh, supposed to know who Johnson was and a lot about his thought chair. But uh, Nexus is leery of it because he doesn't believe in science or the medical industry. He doesn't. He does his own research. He's like, he ther- it, sounds, it sounds to me like pussy therapy. <laughs> Uh, and they tell him like, yeah, it takes about an hour. He's like, well, b- b- fucking bring it down. He actually is on board with this now. And they said, no, 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 no. You got to agree to kill this guy. And I said, oh, fuck. All right. I'm... Just stay somewhere in the, in the, in the fucking moon. And I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. 
right? So he sends him away. He goes back to his room and starts listening to Paramore. Yes. I don't know why that's... Is Paramore an emo-y kind of thing? What's the... <laughs> the like pop group. This is a very libertarian? It's just a, no. It's the first I would, thing that popped my you head. Missed a, you missed a chance to call back to Sister Hazel. Or I could have said... Uh, Who's the guy from Stained? Aaron Lewis. Aaron Lewis. He goes back to his room and listens to Aaron Lewis. Let's just pretend that was my original joke. Sure. Aaron Lewis trying to beef with Springsteen. Really punching up there, like he tra- he's very upset that he found out Springsteen is not a uh, an uh, an alt right conservative douchebag, and so I mean, now he he's... like listened to. How did he not know, know man. he wasn't an alt right? Like Aaron Lewis, like uh, I-, I was just defending like right wing people, be like, hey, just because you're libertarian doesn't mean you're a bad guy. Aaron Lewis is a bad guy. Yeah, he does seem like a bad dude, and he really is trying to get some heat by punching way above his weight. There, it could be a gimmick though. He just like these people. The last like fan base that still spends money or like right wing dudes. So it's like, I'm just going to yeah. lean into that. Cause this is a business. Yeah. I still think he believes it, but yeah. Yeah. I was might. working on Aaron Lewis show run spotlight. Yeah. I did some stained back in the day. So he would like talk to the crowd. I, I was about to say, didn't one or both of you work with this multiple dude? times. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, he would always, this is what always drove, drove me crazy is like got him and guys like him. They'll talk about how hard their life was growing up. Right. Yeah. And like, like my mom had to work 10 jobs and like we didn't have nothing. And uh, but thank God, this is the best fucking country in the whole world. I'm like, dude, you just told me how bad it was. Yeah. Well, it's it's bad because of Joe Biden, of course. Like, man, my mom had no money and now I have a lot of money. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, like, it kind of well, worked out, buddy. But so yeah. like you love America because of how good you have it. But fuck your mom. Like, what do you what, what's the point yeah. of your story? Dude, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm I'm sure somebody can clarify for this. This Dude, one this time I was doing his show, and while I was like doing that spotlight, his LD was in my headset, Lighting just director. going off, yeah. yelling about what a fucking ignorant moron his like employer was. Wow. Shit. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Hopefully, Aaron Lewis doesn't like hear this and like fire his like crew. Well, whatever. This was years ago. He's probably gone through a few different people or whatever. I don't know. The same guy, like, white knuckling it now. He goes, those motherfuckers at Dark Side's Coach. Dude, I mean, yeah. and take your, you know what, and I'll say probably, take your pick of your favorite liberal celebrity. There's like a 50% chance that they're secretly conservative. They just uh, know how, how to say Or they're monsters, like yeah. Ellen. Yeah, Ellen's a terrible person. Bad human Jimmy being. Fallon? No, Jimmy Fallon didn't do nothing. Didn't he? I thought he, like, every, like he got outed as a dick. Uh, yeah. He might be a dick to sometimes. I mean, his I worst mean, crime is he's just not funny. I mean, I don't really find any of that late night stuff funny at the moment. So, as we just <laughs> talked about, how funny the the Captain Picard owns a, very a cake funny. shop. Well, I will is. say though, I've been listening to a lot of uh, Conan O'Brien radio, and Conan O'Brien needs a friend or anything like that, where he is just unchained. And I'm like, dude, you should. I understand why he had to play the game and do the show, and you know, do all that kind of do the shitty interviews and everything like that. But dude, in a perfect world, this is what he would have been doing the entire time. Because oh yeah, it's it's probably way easier too. It's easier. He's doing like he'll he'll say obscene things. He'll he'll paint obscene pictures with his words, and go for it. And he also does the silly stuff and everything like that. And he has a good interview style when he's able to just kind of sit down and have a good interview. But like when he is unchained, he's so fucking funny and smart, and he can be super dirty. He can be silly. He can do all those things that he had to tamp down all those years. And it's it's kind of a bummer that he's almost sixty and he's finally getting to do those things. But like. Check that stuff out if you like. I'm going like, to have to now. He's Normally, on, he's, I hate other podcasts because I see them as competition. He's on the loose now. He's unchained. Is Andy Richter on it too? Is like his co-host? He, he pops in. Um, I haven't listened to that much, but I've definitely heard him pop in and do interviews here and there. Oh um, no, it's his assistant. That's who his co-host is. That yeah, girl he's from got the show. Something. Her name is. I can't remember her name, but yeah, she's cool. Yeah, they they and um, what's his name? Um. Oh, I can't remember his name. He's another podcast guy. Uh, Gourley, Matt Gourley. He's on there. He's very like, it's a, it's a good environment. They have real conversations sometimes and they have silly conversations and they have fucking obscene conversations. And it's nice to have Conan just willingly talk about cock. It's really gratifying hearing Conan O'Brien just talk about cocks. It's re- it feels really good to finally hear that and see him, see him on the loose. Anyway. In my brain, I wrote for notes, like things to make James happy. I'm like, 
Cox. Lots of well, you know, when you got someone like Conan O'Brien, it's just like yeah, I can Cox see, too. I can see your potential. Like I see how funny and smart and good you are, and he snuck a lot of that into his various shows. But you could also see, like, oh, now we got to sit down and talk to fucking Khloe Kardashian for eight minutes and pretend like this isn't fucking brain rotting. Well, you know, the mm. ma- the masturbating bear, masturbating bear, which had to go away because he was playing the game. So the masturbating bear was gone for that a while. Was a, that was a recurring character for a while. Yes, but when he went to the Tonight Show, he got rid of it. Oh, that's why. Well, that's why it didn't work. Yeah, that was not enough masturbating bears. Are they still doing those shows, those talk shows? Are they done? I mean, they exist, but he's done. I, no, I mean know. like the uh, you know the traditional one, the guy uh, in the suit behind the desk. Colbert's Max doing guest. it, but you know, I think that, that it's kind of on its last leg. Like, yeah. I can't imagine people watch that still. Uh, probably not. In the, it's certainly not in the numbers boomers. they used to. But yeah, boomers are keeping it up. So Mike Mike Barron probably watches quite a bit of yeah, quite a bit of a. Uh, Whatever. Well, he uh, would anyway, hate Colbert. He would hate Colbert personally, but he would like his character from the Colbert Report. And oh maybe yeah, that's where it becomes confusing. Maybe he thinks it's mm-hmm. reversed that that was his real self. Oh, but now he's playing a character. And now he's playing a character. <laughs> yeah, I hate his new Democrat character. Yeah, this is stupid. When's he gonna go back to the real thing? Yeah, when's he gonna let this be himself <laughs> unchained? He's gonna uh, have complaints about. He's gonna have complaints about like what you have about Cohen and doing his show and yeah. not being able to be himself. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, we're just about here. We're just about done here. Uh, so uh, Nexus talks to his people. He asks Sundra what she thinks. Sundra says, "I don't fucking have an opinion. I came here to get a story. I, I don't He's know." Like, and then he never asked a woman her opinion ever again. Yeah, that, so was that was the, the one, one time he was, was willing to do it. And uh, so he says, "All right, you know, I, I have these horrible dreams, and nothing's more important to me than losing those dreams. Why don't you all get the fuck out of here? How about that?" I mean, everyone has bad dreams. His are pretty bad, though. <laughs> his are... Yeah. His, and his are real. His are real things that happen. So, right, and he's just going to keep having yeah. that dream. So uh, Sandra starts walking around, and, and it turns out that uh, they have this... He, she's interviewed everybody there, but nobody knows how the complex they live on came to be. Like, it was just there when they showed mm-hmm. up. And uh, so, you know, she's looking around. She's looking at crazy things. We see this thing about a general Theodore Hellpop, uh, a.k.a. the butcher of someplace. So... Apparently, someone probably related to Nexus did some terrible things, so maybe he's got some guilt there, you know? And uh, so then, finally, Nexus returns, and he says he's, he's hesitant to undertake work for hire. He's never done work for hire before because it fucks up his filing his taxes, and he has a 1099 mixed in there with his W-2. That's right. All fucked up, hates it. Mm-hmm. Doesn't want to be a contractor. That's right. Not worth it. He's Not too self-sufficient it. to be employed by you. I got to pay self-employment taxes. It's fucking stupid. I don't need a fishing license. <laughs> And so he walks in and he goes, all right, I'm going to do it. And that's the end of the story. Yep, that's it. And then we that's get a it. tour of the compound. Then we get so a we tour know of what's the... happening. Yep, yeah. the end. Yep, and that was the end. Um, I don't know, my guys, what do we think of this? I like this, and I actually already read issue two. Oh, wow. Wow. Does it just keep ramping up? It's great. It's a good book. Your friend was right to recommend it. Yeah, thanks, Josh. This is up, this job, is up my Josh. alley, though. Like, like superhero books that are off the beaten path. Yeah, it is a good. Well, I mean, it's an objectively good book. It's it's got some unique aspects to it. The art is good, especially for 1981. Right, pretty, black and white. The black and white works too. Pretty like progressive. They, they, it works in its favor of the for yeah. the mood. It's a lot of cool stuff in there. I like it a lot. Shay, it seems like you liked it too. Yeah, I did. Right. I thought it was fun. Yeah, I had. A, I don't have the urge. To, I didn't have the immediate urge to uh, read it. Yeah, like, read issue two. I mean, but I've yeah, been I went, meaning to read this comic book for like two decades. Yeah, mm. it's a winner. It's a winner. Um, yeah, another banger from Mike Barron. Uh, I don't know. I kept going back and forth between it being a perfect rating and not. I don't know that it's quite perfect, but it's really good. It's four out of five scorched Paraguayan kernels. Get them, Nexus. Uh, that's, so that's my new favorite rating system that we've done. Scorch Paraguayan kernels. That was so good. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm I'm happy. Ah, uh, because like your imagination runs wild with it. Of, the, mm-hmm. of like the different ways the Paraguayan general is being obliterated by Nexus. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's he's got to find new ways to entertain himself. Like you brought you brought a whole like my my whole brain. If that wasn't an MRI machine, they'd be like, this motherfucker's brain is lit up. Nice. Well, that's that's the whole goal is to make you think. If I was in a coma and my brain lit up like that, they would become hopeful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. He'll wake Comas up are soon. Sad. Comas are sad. 
That's a real book. Sometimes people wake up. Yeah, it's rare. It's rare. I've never seen it. And there's medically induced comas, so they could be mm-hmm. used for good. Yeah. Uh, we should talk about next time. Yep. So uh, we got a little bit of a different situation this time. Um, I want to note a few we gotta, things. We got to put our money where our mouth is. We've got to put our money in the ass you know, immediately. So here's what we do: we make up rules for ourselves that we don't have to follow, but we choose to follow them, and then we make up more rules, and then I have to figure out a way to enforce these contradictory rules. Like if I wanted to enforce contradictory rules, I'd just be a Christian. Like uh-huh. I don't. Just I don't tell know. the story. The tell. There's not really a story. Well, uh, well, I was on. Uh, I was doing a movie marathon for Twitch last night, and I told. Or no, we were watching the ep. We were watching our last episode on it, and someone in chat. <laughs> I love that. Bad phone, That's Chad. Funny. Was uh, we said like uh, bad phone, Chad. We said that uh, if it's your birthday, you can pick whatever book you want from the wheel. Mm-hmm, it has mm-hmm. to be from the wheel. Mm-hmm. So someone from chat, bad phone, Chad, asked for. Uh, was it strange sports? Strange sports uh, strange, number strange, five. Strange sports number five. We have strange sports number six on the wheel, but we weren't at the point of the show where the wheel showed up yet. And I, it just said like, "Hey, it's your birthday. Pick a comic." And he was just like, "Oh, I want to do this one." And mm-hmm. I'm like, "Well, it's not on the wheel. You got to wait for it to be on the wheel. You, like, you got to request it. And I got to put it on the wheel." He goes, "Well, I'm requesting it now, so it's on the wheel, yeah. and I want to do that one." And I'm this like, "Oh, well, goddamn." This you is got what happens me. when we just make up plan <laughs> i guess and, and we gotta a, make all this stuff work out together there's a um, giant hole in my plan to like yeah. get through the good books we in the wheel did not discuss these things ahead of time uh so yeah well i have a couple things because i know people really like the dopamine fix of spinning that wheel so we're gonna get to that in, in just a second i i think i figured out how to make this work i hope oh thank god um yeah first off i do want to mention our buddy hermer firmer uh, from twitch he sent us a request uh which is going to go mm-hmm. right on the usual wheel it's for giant size man thing number one from see, we did. see what's going on there you written <laughs> Yeah, written by the irascible <laughs> Steve Gerber, who most certainly knew what he was doing with the title of that. So thanks. That's mm-hmm. going to go on the wheel, which is in Say it again. Say the title giant again. Giant-sized man, man thing. thing. Um, I got one that's of gonna, those. That's going to go uh, uh, right on the wheel. Yeah, and he pulls out the comic book. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. That's what I did. That, that is a good word. Uh, that's that's going to go uh, get a slot on the wheel. Uh, that's in the process. The wheel itself is in the process of being trimmed down, by the way. Yeah, it's we're going to cut out all the garbage. Control. But the request will stay, so yeah. keep sending your request. Um, to a degree. So that that's uh, one thing from Herma Firmer. Thank you. So Bad Phone Chad did call her bluff on YouTube. So yep. we're going to... We're gonna do our best to honor this. I also know, though, um, people really like the wheel. They need their endorphin fix. So here's what I've done. I've rigged up the wheel, a new wheel that we can spin. It's got it's got 14 instances of Strange Sports number five on it. And just to add a little drop of blood to the water, just to make it dangerous, there's one instance of Heathcliff's Funhouse number nine. Now, I don't want to do Heathcliff's Funhouse number nine. It, it's it's Nobody would. It's terrible. But we need to have some sort of risk involved. I think we still need to have to spin the wheel, I think. Wait, I don't understand. What do you mean? I just I just grabbed a random shitty comic. And I said, uh, he, he's this. saying we we're put we there's like 15 chances here. 15 and it, chances. by chance, if we land on Heathcliff's Funhouse, we're doing. Oh, it. my God. What a good idea. I got to add a little Russian roulette to it. Oh, because, I like that because I don't want to do that. People love the wheel. They love the wheel song. They love this whole part of the show, and I don't want to take it away from people. Oh, there it just is, because there's a request. It, the wheel provides. It's there on it is. there. Close. Okay. Oh my goodness. So it could go very, very wrong. Now I do also want to show you guys uh, what the cover of Strange Sports number five looks like, because that's pretty fucking great too. So on this book, we've got um, we've got a hockey story, and it says, "What was the sinister secret of the goalie who wore a hockey mask of death?" Pretty oh my, good. Pretty right. good. But then below it. <laughs> It's, there's another story that says, how can a sheriff ski across space to get his man? All right. Yeah. And there's a, there's <laughs> all of those words are. There's a together. cowboy sheriff skiing across space, not wearing an astronaut's uniform, by the Yo, way. Yo, he's not even prepared to go skiing. <laughs> yeah, he is he not can't. prepared to do anything. <laughs> so I love this. I want this very, very much. So that's uh, what we're going to look at on the wheel. Hey, here. you know what? Good for bad phone, Chad, to get what we're doing here. Yeah. I always respect yeah, when somebody can make nice. sense of this, and I wish someone would explain it to me. Hermer Firmer's like, I'm going to pick a comic that sounds like a big fat dick. You're like, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, you got it. That's yeah. what we're doing here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> space, sometimes the listeners ski. get it more than we do. Uh, ill-prepared skiing space sheriffs? Yep. Fuck it. Fuck it. Hey. <laughs> that's and, uh, what just, I want to do. Just to make it a little more confusing, Hermer Firmer also sent us a couple of spinning songs wreck, song wrecks because we got to 
listen to some spinning music, of course, uh, but they're both ones we've done before. Uh -huh. All right. But since this whole thing is a chaotic mess anyway, this time, I guess we've never listened to them together. So uh, here's Talking Heads, Slippery People and Dead or Alive, You Spin Me Around. God help us all. God help us all. So there you go. Yo, that almost bangs. I, yeah. I did some work with it. I did some work to kind of get it together, but I wasn't going to dedicate too much time. But I, I did get them synced up at least. All right. Well, you know what? Good for you. I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> I, I actually was going to pitch shift them, but both those fucking songs move around in their keys. Oh, uh, well, still good job, dude. Yeah. I'm going to get something going. Um, all right. So let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> Spin this wheel. Uh, what a good solution. It's scary. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> it's Strange Sports number five. Oh, man. I uh, tell you, I thought for sure Heathcliff. I, what I, a twist. Like, what like, I would have I would have bet on Heathcliff winning. <sighs> I did spin it a few times earlier just to kind of test it out and see how I felt. <laughs> all uh, right. So, all right. All right because all right, this, this like worked out then. Yeah. Worked out great. Like if people like have a birthday, they can tell they can tell us like, hey, I want to do this and we'll just do it. Yeah, that's kind of we have a, yeah. Because now we have a way to make it still part of the kinda normal thing. Bypass the system a little bit. Yeah. And have them have some risk too, the same way we have some risk when we're picking books. Yeah, you might not get it. Listen, yeah, you might it's, not get we're it. not legally obligated. No. Like this is a libertarian podcast. Yeah, we're gonna absolutely. do what we feel like we need to do. This you is, do what you need to do. This is the nexus of podcasts. Yes. Um, all right, so we were looking wait, at strange there, sports. Wait, yeah. In lore, we did make a Nexus podcast. We did? Yeah, the lore of the comic. We made it so Nexus had his own podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, an so Aurora like, podcast. I guess we can't be the Nexus of podcasts because he has Dude, one. I can't keep the lore of this thing straight. Um, all right, guys. The uh, devil only has 2,000 times I think... <laughs> to loan to people. Well, he, he might have more. What other lore only... is there? <laughs> He's only yeah. what other lore? Like uh, Magna Conte's head kill. Chewy is the mayor of Garcia. Chewy, uh, Chewy is the mayor of Chicago. I am the mayor of Garcia. That's epic. <laughs> All right, Shay. Uh, I want you. Why don't you plug me up? Plug me up good. All right. Uh, get your shit together before Mike has to tell you to, and listen to more episodes using any podcast app or uh, Spotify or Apple Music. Uh, and you can find even more on DarkSidesCouch.com. And then follow Dark Side's Couch on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and comment who your favorite monkey Elvis is of all time. Uh, I think you forgot a very important social media platform, though, Shay. I am I said Twitter. Mm, that's not what it's called. Can you just say it? X. X. Owner Elon Musk changed the iconic bird logo to the letter X. Bye-bye, bird. Say hello to X. Twitter was simply um, an arm of the government. The only arm I'm interested in is mine when I'm getting a honk from a big rig. A state publication is the way to think of old Twitter. Elon is going to state the facts. The letter X is badass. He says the idea of using an X is to, quote, embody the imperfections in all of us. Thank you for understanding the complexities of the human condition. X. That was you, Shay. You set that off. You caused that. I, I, was, I caused that. I was going to trigger that while you were talking, but you, you just would not say X. You got to say X. I got to hear it. It's called X now, Shay. It's, it was always called X. It was never not X. I grew up with X. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We had fun. I think I'm going to go get some Thai food. That sounds good. Some late night Thai yeah. food, yeah. Yeah. Well, they close in forty five minutes, so I got to get out the door. All right. Um, All anybody right. got any final thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, next time we're going to say happy <laughs> birthday to Bad Phone Chad. Nexus time. Nexus time doesn't follow traditional time measuring no. standards. No, there's no such thing as time. Time is an illusion. Shay. Happy New Year. <laughs> Ta ta for now, Christian Crusader. We'll talk to you later. In the year 2481, deep beneath the moon Ilum, the great nexus slumbers and dreams. Boo.
Minimum wage workers in 22 states will get a raise at the start of the new year. Mm, no. The big government nanny state will ruin small business. Today, the Supreme Court decided not to block an Illinois law banning assault-style weapons in Illinois. No. Second Amendment. Government overreach. Cold, dead hands. The nation's gross debt reaching the dreaded milestone of $34 trillion, according to the Treasury. Oh, 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 oh. it was just a nightmare. Oh, well, no point going back to sleep tonight. I gotta put on something to calm me down. Live from Freedom Command Central, it's the Alex Jones Show. Ah. 